Good morning, friends. Uh, Michael and I are taking a walk down to go find Lady because she should be calving here pretty soon. Calving. And we want to, we haven't checked on her yet. It's like 7 o'clock in the morning and it's time to go check on her. We had some snow yesterday. Very light dusting. But the kids had a blast with it yesterday. So hopefully Lady hasn't calved or is she starting to because we'd like to be there to watch that. And I'd like to to be able to film it too. Lola. Lola, good morning. Oh, chasing the kitty. Lola. Oh, there's no kitty. That one chases back. Yeah, she likes to chase the mama kitty. Is that your favorite game in the whole world? There's one cow. Here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Holy smokes, that's ridiculous. <laughs> you know what it's doing? Eating? Saying, it's saying, hey, boys. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't see it? I okay. seen it. Oh, okay. What are you doing? What's up, ladybug? You gonna have a baby on that hillside? Look at that tail. Well, her counterweight's facing the right direction. Yeah. Her tail is so high right now. Beautiful girl. You're so pretty. Yes, you are. You're so pretty. Oh, look at her. And then you got waddles over there. <laughs> her belly truly sways back and forth as she walks. Because <laughs> she's so big. Ladybug! So we decided that if Lady has just one baby, I'm gonna milk her. And if she has two, we're out of luck. Because her udders aren't quite big enough to sustain us and two babies. But she's springing, her tail is up super high, her udder bag is full. Look at how high her tail is. She is utterly ready to have a calf. Another thing I wanted to show you guys, which I'm going to go to the other side now. I have not seen this before. Lady has very thick colostrum. Like super. Can you guys see how thick that is? I've never seen something so thick. Huh? It's almost like a glue stick when it's melted and it comes out, it's so thick. But it's, from what I've read, that means that she's, she's close and ready to go. But I've never paid attention to the classroom before. I've just paid attention to the other signs. Is that so yummy, girls and boy? <laughs> Those are some happy cows now. Okay, this is what we're having for breakfast this morning. I made crepes. We're gonna do a savory crepe. We have turkey bacon, a fried egg, and then I also did a sweet one for the kids, and this is whipped cream sweetened with maple syrup, which really I don't know why I sweetened it, because I added some of this raspberry jam to it, raspberry preserves, and that is gonna be the kids' breakfast this morning. Yum, yum, yum. So, my hardworking husband, what have you been up to this past week? I have been throwing this, this uh, covered awning off the back of the house. Part of it's going to be a greenhouse over there. This part. Um, that's, this has got such a long span right here. This is the part with the greenhouse uh, where we're going to put the greenhouse. Um, basically, that frost free water spigot is coming out of here. And I didn't dig it out of here this summer, and it's getting too late. We're getting frozen below freezing every night. So, um, eventually this next spring I will dig a ditch over to somewhere over in that direction and put the frost free spigot over there and I'll just go ahead and stick one coming out of the house from out from underneath a regular spigot. Are you going to put another post for, in there? For now I'm going to put a temporary post just sitting on the ground just for the winter. We'll use it. Oh, I can't remember what it's called, but a 
UV rated greenhouse corrugated roofing. And we're just going to do that on the whole roof and then the sides of the greenhouse part are gonna be out of that. And it'll be closed off from the rest of the porch. What our idea here is, is to dig down and do some sort of a root cellar with the roof over it, with a lot of it being below grade. You got some grade issues where it slopes into the house here, so it's a good opportunity to use that and get, get a lot of it underground. And we'll go ahead and do a concrete foundation on this part. So this is obviously not gonna happen anytime really soon. But from this, this is the main focus is to get some cover over the door and um, to get something that we can get some starts going, going in this year for, for garden. We need a place to do starts early the weather's just too rough here to just plant everything and seed. We're going to be doing a lot of starts. So, and the really nice thing is, Michael's only had to buy the pressure treated boards here, the big posts, not boards. Everything else he sawed up with a sawmill. So he's really getting a lot of money's worth of wood using that sawmill. It's so nice to be able to step on the back deck. We had, I showed you guys this morning. We had snow yesterday. And it was really nice to be able to walk out and have a covered area. Okay, now that I'm crying at the storm from cutting my, my onion, I have my Dutch oven going and it's really hot. I've had to move it off to the side several times because it's just really warm on this side today. Excuse me while I cry some more. I still haven't found like, the, the cook stove part is still a learning curve for me because some days I can get this nice and hot and exactly where I need it to be, and some days over here is too cold. Right now, it seems like this is a nice um, warmer spot. This is a super hot spot. So for starting it, I'm gonna keep it right here, um, and then I'll probably move it over as I, as I saute up my vegetables. So I'm gonna add in some grapeseed oil and some butter, just because my pan is so hot that I know my butter's gonna burn. I'm gonna add in my onions. I added one whole onion. So I'm gonna let these saute and I'm going to chop some celery now. It's already starting to get dark on me. I just started too. Okay, now I'm gonna add carrots and celery. It is amazing how early it's getting dark now. Already, that looks amazing. Okay, I just added some butter and some flour. I'm gonna make a roux. I am following somewhat of a recipe. At the same time, I'm winging it as well. Because I think following a recipe for guidelines is good, but you should add your own little spin on it. The recipe calls for three cups of water. I'm gonna add in three cups of chicken broth going to be a little over three cups because on my measuring on my mason jars this is three cups of liquid and I have a little over a half a cup probably three quarters of a cup extra and I'm just going to add it all in. Okay and I have uh, three-ish tablespoons of tomato paste. I have some leftover potatoes from last night that I'm going to add in here. There's probably like two or three potatoes worth, but better to use them to waste them than to waste them. Okay, now I'm going to add the rest of my potatoes in there and give this a good stir. It's already starting to thicken up, so I'm going to move it back off the heat since it's starting to bubble. Ooh, I got my dress underneath there. I'm gonna add four-ish ounces of cream cheese into my soup, our heavy cream water mixture. One can of corn, because you can't have chowder without corn. It just doesn't work. <laughs> Two cans of salmon with the little bit of juice that's in there that my mother-in-law gave us. Well, she gave us the salmon and then she helped me can it. So thank you, Debbie. Ooh, this is gonna be so good. And the other staple that you just can't have chowder with 
out is pepper. So we're going to add a lot, a lot of pepper. And I'm going to let this go until everything heats up and the potatoes cook thoroughly and dinner is done. Okay, so how I'm going to do my bread is I just put my flour on my, my um, wooden cutting board, added my salt. Now I'm going to pour my dough. dough yes, my dough mixture from this morning. It's got flour, water, and yeast in there. Okay, I'm going to let this sit and rise next to the cook stove for about 45 minutes like the recipe said. It's kind of on the smaller side. I kind of wish I would have done two, but you know, it is what it is now. Hopefully it'll make it through dinner. Okay, so I forgot to show you guys dinner. I've already sat down. Uh, the chowder is amazing. The bread turned out wonderful. So we're just gonna hang out and watch um, an American homestead. So I wanted to come out here and end the video this way because I didn't have a chance to tell you guys who won our rooster's name contest. Um, Allison, we chose Sergeant Pepper. Thank you for your guys' suggestions, but we really just loved that one, especially since he's black and white. It just was so fitting. And there's our big guy right now. And the loud ducks. Hello, Sergeant Pepper. <laughs> love it. Absolutely love it. Good morning, girls. Big boy. And I don't know what happened when I was ending the video with the bread. I completely forgot to show you guys putting it in the oven, um, pulling it out and what that loaf looked like. That was the first time I'd ever made ciabatta bread and it is absolutely something I'm gonna keep on the menu. I'm actually gonna keep a couple of those bags in the fridge for when we wanna make ciabatta bread because it has to sit for 12 to 24 hours. So once or twice a week having ciabatta bread on the menu, I think is perfect. Um, I, it did go through our whole family with soup. There was no leftovers, but one loaf did do the job. And I never did say what I was making. It was just kind of an off day, I guess. Um, I made smoked salmon chowder, and I will leave the recipe for that in the description. That was delicious, so good, so worth making if you guys like chowder of any kind, especially salmon chowder. Anyways, I hope that you guys enjoyed the video and we will catch you guys in our next one. Blessings and happy homesteading. Bye. It's not safe. <laughs> you better watch out for that. That cow pie right there. Don't do that in that one. How are you now? Can you jump? <laughs> You're stuck! You're stuck? <laughs>